I'm not going to kill you. Your job will be to tell the rest of them that death is coming for them tonight. Tell them Eric Draven sends his regards. Walk out of here. They're gonna erase your sorry ass. You're nothing but street grease, Eric. Street grease, you motherfucker. Is that gasoline I smell? No, man. No! 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 no. Hello everyone, this is Pico Entertainment and we are back again and here now we have another video for you and we're going to take a look back and reflect on The Crow and how good of a comic book adaptation it is and of course the legacy left behind regarding Brandon Lee. Released in May the 13th 1994, it has Brandon Lee in the lead alongside Ernie Hudson and Michael Wincott and it was directed by Alex Proyas. Now the story of The Crow is that we are set in present day Detroit where Sergeant Dale Albright happens upon a crime scene where musician Eric Draven and his fiance Shelley Webster have been brutally murdered in their apartment by a criminal gang. One year later, a crow flies towards Eric's grave and he is suddenly resuscitated from the ground back to life. In a disorientated state, he experiences flashbacks of his death and Shelley's, recollecting the identity of the gang's members. He also discovers that he has certain powers and abilities which include healing powers for mortal wounds and super strength and fighting skills. He also transforms his appearance, painting his face all in white. And with his newfound powers, he sets about on a quest for vengeance on the gang as they continue to cause carnage with burning fires all over the city. Now, when looking back on The Crow, it is definitely a stylish and bold movie adaptation of a comic book, which itself was originally created by James O. Barr back in 1989. It was very much a follow on from the dark gothic comic book adventure that was established in 1989 with Tim Burton's Batman, and later on with the likes of Sam Raimi's Dark Man in 1990 but it very much shares the same themes of dealing with death, retribution and revenge. It is indeed very rich in atmosphere and tone, alongside the gothic aesthetic. It fuses elements of that era of 90s MTV style grunge that goes all the way from Eric's character design to the soundtrack. Now more modern day audiences may find the film a bit dated as a result, but I don't think it takes away from the film's style and cinematography. Now to be honest, the film doesn't start off that great and it gets a bit erratic as we see flashbacks of Eric trying to deal with the tragedy of events and we get all of these quick flashy colourful edits. Now I assume director Alex Proyas wanted to capture Eric's sense of disorientation at being revived but it does come across as a bit messy. But once Eric sets about his vengeance the film settles and starts to have more poise and sophistication about it, proving to be quite the visual experience. With some great shots and sequences including a bird's eye view of Eric setting a crow design on fire on the ground in a very typical comic book panel shot. And in the lead role, Brandon Lee is great. He had already shown signs of a likeable charismatic performer in his early roles in the likes of Showdown Little Tokyo and also Rapid Fire. And his performance as Eric Draven isn't quite the brooding persona that we'd normally see in this type of story. There's an eerie confidence and indulgence as Eric goes about his work. Note how he never questions the source of his abilities at his revival against something that many movies would have focused on. He gleefully continues on his mission and this type of character does allow Lee to infuse more of his natural personality on screen. Now we could criticise the fact that it isn't explained as to why exactly the crow has revived Eric or how he indeed inhabits his superpowers. And whilst we could have had some extra added context, this type of fakeness adds a certain mystery element to the overall story and is very much in keeping with the film's style and tone. Now in terms of the supporting cast, all of the other actors are fine in their roles, both Ernie Hudson as the Sergeant Darrell and also Rochelle Davis as a young girl that knew Eric before they had come to their deaths. And Michael Wincott, who's always been that B-level movie actor, does provide a solid, snarly, villainous presence in the lead role as Top Dollar. So when we look back at the movie's overall release, and it steadily built its way to becoming a solid financial success, grossing 93.7 million against a budget of 23 million. It garnered a lot of good critical reception for its visual style and tone. The movie, of course, is forever defined by the tragic death of Brandon Lee. During filming an extra scene when Eric Draven is shot after witnessing Sarah being murdered, the revolver used for the scene should have been a dummy cartridge loaded with a blank round. But due to the responsibilities of the gun being set to an inexperienced member of staff, 
The required checks were not carried out and the gun was fired with a live bullet striking Lee fatally in the abdomen. Now many will say that his death perhaps bolstered interest and success of the movie akin to what we saw with Heath Ledger's passing away with The Dark Knight. And whilst that could be true, I'm still firmly of the belief that Brandon Lee had enough talent and presence and he would have gone on to bigger and better movies after The Crow's release. And whilst of course he didn't have the ultra exceptional martial arts skills of his father, he was definitely a superior actor and I do believe there was far more scope for more versatile roles in which Lee could have developed into a far more substantial movie star. Now in terms of a continuation after the first movie, we did see further sequels released. The Crow City of Angels in 1996 had Vincent Perez in a lead role and it was also a television series titled The Crow Stairway to Heaven that was released in 1998 starring action star Mark Dacascos which only managed to run for one season. Now none of these following entries came anywhere near close to matching the overall quality of the first film and as a movie itself The Crow still remains a very stylish bold comic book adaptation and still very much a fine lasting legacy for Brandon Lee. So that's my overall thoughts and feelings and look back on The Crow. Let me know what you think in the comments below. How do you think it ranks in terms of comic book adaptations and cinematic treatments? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Would you like to see a reboot or reintroduction of this series? And how do you feel Brandon Lee would have continued his career if it weren't for the accident? Do you think he could have gone on to be a far bigger actor within the 90s? Also let me know within the comments and if you have any other suggestions regarding any other movies or television series or any other issues within the entertainment industry that you'd like to see me cover then also let me know in the comments and I will see if I can provide further commentary for you on this issue in the future. Please also hit and like the subscription and notification buttons so I can provide you more high quality content like this in the future. But that's it for now, take care of yourselves and I will see you very very soon.